In this session, what we're aiming to do is do an overall assessment of this young Rottweiler champ for the owners to give them a good insight into understanding their dog better, what his triggers are, how to read his body language, and just how to manage him as a dog, which is what I'm always talking to people about. It's about understanding your dog. A dog that's reactive doesn't mean he's a bad thing. It's about why he's reactive, what his triggers are, what sets him off. So what I'm talking about here, as I'm pointing out, is his body language. He's obviously highly stimulated. He's excited to meet my dog. As a fence meeting, this is actually pretty good because generally between fences, a dog is more reactive. So it's not always a good way to assess two dogs. But we do it firstly to see how he is between the fence. So not bad body language with my dog. Uh, excited, wants the dog to come in. Now, what I'm going to do here is manage this meeting. When I bring Nash in, I'm going to put Champ on the other side. And then what you're going to see is that I will let my dog free because... As I say in the video, um, that I trust my dog to make good decisions. I think one of the best uh, assessments of your dog is using, obviously, another dog. As humans, we can only really guess what we believe they're thinking. But in the end, a dog knows better than we do. So if you have a good helper dog, mentor dog, whatever you want to call it, I believe this is the single best way to assess a temperament of another dog. Because if they are mature and they can read, they're not going to come near them. They're going to let you know that this this dog, whatever you're training or assessing, like Champ here, may give off a vibe that, that upsets the other dog and it just gives you a good insight. So what I initially do here is let a bit of freedom go around. Now, you won't hear the audio, but you'll see Nash react here. Now, really, Champ doesn't do a lot wrong. He's a little stiff and Nash doesn't like it. Now, Nash has been bitten in the past, so maybe that's a little trigger for him as well. But he, my dog, really likes to control the meeting. What I like, what I saw there was actually Champ sort of respected that pretty well. He's still coming forward, but he's not going towards the head. He's more wanting to meet at the back. But he gets a little stiff. You see how he pushes really tall there and comes up tall. And it just, it just triggers Nash a little bit. Not in a bad way. Nash is pretty good around him. He's certainly not fearful of him. Because the fact that he's turning his back to him and walking past him and not always keeping his eyes on him shows that he's not really overly concerned, but he also trusts me as an owner. Nash has done this many times with a lot of dogs, so he knows that I would not put him at, at risk or in danger of a dog attacking him. So I think that's part of it as well, but he also, like I said, he isn't fearful of, of, uh, of champs. He shakes it off a little bit there, a little bit of the, the tension between them. Um, look, and whether these two become best friends or not, doesn't really matter. Too many owners are pushing for that all the time when really it should be about, can your dog be around dogs? And that that should be your first concern. Can I just have my dog around dogs? In the end, um, you, your dog is for you and to enjoy and socialise and play and run and do things with. It's not a, a high priority that your dog wants to play with others, but provided they can read body language, understand them, and when another dog tells yours to stay away through body language, through growling, whatever it is, that they understand how to do that. And this is what Champ needs a lot more of. He hasn't been around a lot of dogs. See, Nash just doesn't like that behaviour. Although that is pretty normal in dogs, fairly accepted, Nash doesn't like it for some reason. He wants to control the meeting, like I've said. So... Um, Champ's got to understand that. And that's what we're trying to do. He hasn't had a lot of exposure due to the fact that he really is so big and he's been quite hard for the owners to manage in that way because his physicality is a very strong dog. Um, and you're going to hear audio in the other sections of the video, but this one here, I just wanted to do it again and point out a few things in particular that I didn't during the live sort of recording. Um that are important to notice. But I like that Nash is sort of ignoring him. You're going to the corner. He's not highly stressed about him and paying too much attention to him, provided Champ gives him some space. And that's all he's after. You can see Nash is looking at him there. He just wants space. And really, this is the case that we're looking for in most dogs, is that can your dog understand that another one is trying to tell them to give him some space? I don't want to play. And then we're really getting somewhere. And I feel if Champ does a lot more of this, very controlled exposure and socialising can get better. He's a young, intact male. 
Uh, and that could be a factor in this, as absolutely is not always, but it can be a factor in tension and, and whether a dog just gives up a vibe. It could be that. It could be a lack of socialising. It's usually a combination of things, and this is what the goal is to work through in, in this session. That's what we're aiming to do is give the owner answers in, and more insight into understanding their dog. So after this one, you can hear original audio and uh, hopefully you'll learn a lot more out of this video. Enjoy. And the reason I do this is, well, some people might say, why would you add a ball to extra stimulate? Well, if you're going to be in an environment with lots of dogs and other dogs with balls, um, you're going to have this. So Nash is growling now. This is ball. He doesn't want him near him. He's... See, see uh, he wants to play, but he's given off this real, like, see the tail? He's got a mixed message. He definitely wants to play, but he's un he's unsure. He doesn't done it a lot. He hasn't been with a lot of dogs. So he's given off this vibe, and Nash just isn't overly keen on him. But again, he doesn't have to be. He's pretty relaxed now. So we're just going to get him to just chill out a bit. The answer here is really getting this dog around more dogs. Anyway, there's the ball involved. This is just to see where the champ, again, reads the room when it comes to um, a ball or something like that. If I throw this right in front of the champ. What I do like is that this guy, for whatever vibe he gives off, he's, he's listening. There's just a little bit of resource guard in there. See that, you see that growling? Nash is like, hey buddy, I want this water. Chance back it up through that snarl there. He's not really deserving that, but Nash has been attacked in the past when he was younger. So uh, he's a little defensive with dogs. <laughs> um, Nash, leave it. Um, but I can see where it's coming from. I know I've said this a few times, everyone watching, but uh, it's definitely, see this? It definitely gives off this. Uh, Nash, leave it, buddy. Um, gives off a, a tense vibe to dogs, how he stands and stares. Champ, leave, leave it. No, hey, back up. So he's good in a lot of ways, but he's still got to learn to just relax a bit. But again, I'll say it one more time. I think the answer to this guy really is getting around dogs. Good dogs that aren't going to hurt him. That can just, um, it's just so exciting to him. He just doesn't know how to relax yet. It'll take time. He is a non-dissexed male. Big full male. This is female. This is not the tension we want out of a dog. A little bit of frustration there towards Marty. Okay, so we're not expecting all dogs to be perfect with dogs. But you may come across this, so you're going to have to know how to deal with it. This is a reality when we talk to people about trying to use treats. Do we does anybody watching this really believe that a treat is going to stop this now? Now, I know a lot of you out there would say, we'll just create distance between the dogs. Yeah, but unfortunately, when you go for a walk, sometimes you may come across this and you may not be able to get distance between you and that dog. It just may be the way it is. So clearly, these two aren't going to be friends. But we want to get to the point where we can be around a dog. And at least relax a little bit. Okay, so we've got this young guy muzzled. Let's go, buddy. The only way to really know, no, 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 let's go. Let's go. Nope, nope, nope. Only just got the muzzle on. Let's go, buddy. Nope. Any way to really know intentions of a dog? By getting them together. You can let her free. No, no, you can let her free. She doesn't have to stay. On a side note, when you're conditioning a dog to a muzzle, Ensure it's the correct size. If it's not, that can often be a big factor when they're getting used to it. They should be able to open their mouth like this. Really natural, drink water, take treats if they need to, and it's way quicker to uh, condition them to it. But if it's holding their mouth shut, they're obviously gonna fight. 
So make sure it's a quality muzzle that is fitted really well so it doesn't hinder the dog too much and they can be pretty natural with it. Good boy. So he's getting much better. He's never worn one with me before. Let's go, buddy. Let's try to move him around. Nope, nope. Yeah, good. No, 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 no. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Good boy. So we'll sort of see how they go through the fence initially. See there's a bit less tension. I'm going to give him all the chance in the world to come towards dogs, provided he's nice. That's a much better tail for him with this dog. So this is a big, no, no, no. This is a big factor, tails. Okay, so I'll bring him back. So that's a nice start. Let's go, buddy. Quick, back this way. Good. That's a nice start. Way better body language than Willow. Okay. So what we're going to do here is I'm really just want to, I wouldn't suggest doing this in the street. We're not going to do that. But here, we've got muzzle dog and we know we've got a nice dog. We're just going to let them approach. We're going to see what tension they have and see how they work through it. So you can see Marshall's pausing there, letting Champ check him out, which is very respectful. Tail up, but letting it happen. Good. Let's see if he reciprocates it. Nope. I don't like that foot being lifted up there. See the little foot that Champ lifted up there? We don't, no, 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 no. Nope, good, leave the muzzle. We don't want the feet lifting up on the dog's back. See that? Tension. Okay. Not great, but we do have two males. So we wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest this meeting in the street, obviously, but we're just testing here, we're assessing. That tension, you would never keep those two dogs together. That's why we sort of got them apart. Um, two strong males. And there's definitely, see this sort of freezing? It's a little bit better. Nope, nope. Um, freezing is what we don't want. Neither of them are very relaxed. But we're not trying to get them to be friends. We're trying to see if dogs can be around dogs. And you can definitely do that. But if you notice, none of the dogs that have come out have wanted to really yeah, have much to do with him. They've all been away from him, all been telling him to go away. So he's obviously given off a vibe to other dogs that is very tense and it doesn't let them relax. Uh, so this is what we're working with, you know, I, I, he just, he's got to learn to chill out a bit. So whether, you know, people have opinions on desexing dogs or not, some people think it works and I have seen it be very positive in some dogs and I've seen the negative of it as well. There's no real one answer for every dog. Uh, they're all very different. It's sometimes a bit of a trial and error. You try to avoid it, but sometimes it can make a big difference. This is a young, strong, full male who pushes his weight around and uh, gives off a vibe, obviously, because other dogs are tripped out by him. You can see the pattern here. There's, the dogs are meeting him, but none of them have wanted much to do with him. Um, and I do think it's because of that tension, the tail up, the stiffness. He's not given a relaxed vibe. He leans in, eye contact, really not ideal for the, in the real world. We, wanna, we don't want to have any of that body language. Give me your opinion out there. Let me know your insights. What do you think? Um, you may have different opinion of me, but I think that's some general vibe. Very stiff. Very strong tail, up, standing tall, leaning over, you saw on the last dog. So unless we get that better, this dog's not gonna be socializing a lot of dogs um, because it's just a, a fair bit of a risk. But maybe, maybe D Sexton's answer for this dog. I don't know, a lot of, I know people out there think, oh, you shouldn't ever do it, but I've seen some good changes with it. So um, yeah, it's a bit of a guessing game sometimes. Well, obviously we're not dogs. We can just do our best to assess and what we think. We've got another dog coming in now. Okay, let's see how we go. Um, with this next dog and see if there's a difference in this dog being very relaxed and him relaxing now, obviously there's a connection with there if one dog's relaxed the other dog tends to be more relaxed okay so he's given an initial yeah it still goes a little stiff and pauses at the fence but that's okay let's go champ champ let's go buddy let's go buddy. Good, boy. good okay so that's our first little Fence assessment, again, not a very accurate way to assess dogs, but we want to do that first. Okay, so let's see how he wants to meet this dog. If Martin does a little controlled meeting, holds the young lab, I bring Champ up to the back. I want to see his intentions. Does he want to go here? Does he want to go here? See how he's very bullish and, yeah, and look at this, pulling straight to the front. Not nice, not, not ideal when it comes to dog meetings. We don't want that. We want a dog that wants to spend time to know what a dog is, a male, a female, whatever. But he was like, sniff, and then bang, 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 pull me straight towards the front. Very, you know, just uh, not the best manners. But they can be educated, they can be improved. Okay, 
we'll let them relax around each other a little bit and we'll see what vibe these guys give off. Okay. That's, that's good. Nice. Seems to be definitely a connection with obviously other dogs that aren't tense with him being less tense. He's definitely better with a more relaxed dog. An ideal world, this dog would have been conditioned before he come here with the muzzle, but we're trying to work through muzzle conditioning plus dog meeting, so it's a little difficult, not ideal. Okay, so this is what I thought it would be with this dog. Way less interest because it's super relaxed. So this is what it's about, reading your dog and learning what your dog can be around and what it can't be around. You as an owner learning to read a dog's body language like that, a soft, welcoming, nice dog, generally relaxes him. It was one of the first times we've seen his tail down. So we do know the connection now. It's a, it's a vibe off the other dog, which is nothing nothing new. We all know that. But that's what we're here for today, you know, to work out really what his uh, triggers are, what makes him tense and what doesn't, and, and work through it and give the owners an answer there. So I'll give him freedom provided he's nice. We want to try and relax these leads. We want to try and give dogs good, no tension. Nope, leave your muzzle, buddy. I know, I know. I know, mate. I know, I know. I still don't like how he comes up to the chin, Martin, and hits the earth. You know what I mean? I don't love it, but it's not upsetting this guy. He's pretty chilled, but he's given off a much nicer vibe. Let's drop the leads with these two, just for a minute. And obviously we still don't be careless, we hover, we watch. I've got a muzzle involved. Good. Nope. Talk Marty, you're on video. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, do you think if any dog wasn't as calm as this one and like even stood up to him a bit, it would kick off. Well, no, Nash yeah, corrected him. Sort of like, oh, Nash oh. corrected him before and he responded really well to a correction. Um, you might have missed that. I got that on camera. So Martin was just saying, the reason I got the muzzle off him here is you can see the difference in his vibe with this dog. He's not a dangerous dog. We're just putting muzzles on him for being cautious. Um, it's not because I thought he was going to attack him. He actually quite likes this dog. He's not giving any bad, horrible vibes. His tail's a lot more relaxed with this guy. And Beans gives himself a good vibe. So... You know, there's a lot to be said for a relaxed dog making your dog relaxed. Um, he's still a little annoying, <laughs> like in the face, Bean's very patient with him. But we've definitely found a connection there. Uh, Martin was asking, yeah, like, do you think it'll kick off? I mean, yeah, it could, but he did respond really well to my dog's correction. Um, that lip lick is really nice, in my opinion. Some of you out there may not think it is. I think it's nice. When a dog lick, lips, licks the lips of another dog, I've never generally ever seen a fight afterwards. It's a real sort of sign of I come in peace. Um, so that's a really nice, good boy. Good boy, buddy. Good, so we've got two. No, he didn't get much, no. Yeah, he just didn't get a lot of dog dog socialising exposure because he's so big and so strong. So the owners felt a bit stuck, which it can be difficult, you know, to get a new dog. But this shows you, you know, I've got a black lab and he can be reactive, but around the right dog, he's not. So he's a lot more chilled around, chilled dogs, good boy. Saying to Martin, big difference in body language. He likes the face though, he wants to play. He's trying to get this, he's trying to instigate some play out of this guy. Bean's like, dude. <laughs> no. And that's not aggression. A lot of people use that as aggression. That's just a little a little rude. Not always a dominant sign of dominance. Can just be a little rude dog. Plenty of dogs hump and they're not dominant dogs or whatever. This is the first dog that's wanted anything to do with him and actually play. That's better. Good little half play bow there. Beans are starting to warm up to him. Nice. That's what this guy needs. Lots of dogs, lots of, lots of right dogs. Good boy. So remember the video you saw before, a dog that you thought would have tried to kill another dog and now he's doing this. So this, remember that, it's not always the same with every dog, it's just, not all people like every other person. Dogs are the same. They like some, they don't like others. Some dogs give tension, some dogs don't give attention. This is perfect dog behavior. 
They're both pretty good. He's a little annoying, like I said. Ben's just like, dude, you're a lot. But um, there's no aggression there. Pretty neutral tails. Nothing horrible, really. And he needs this exposure. He needs a lot of exposure. Good boy. It's like a fast car, Martin. Some people can drive a fast car and some people shouldn't because they're probably going to kill themselves and crash it. Some people can handle that power. That's probably a good analogy. I like analogies and comparisons. <laughs> but it's a good one to what Martin said. Some people can handle a strong dog like that and manage it. Other people can't. I'm not saying these owners can't, but we're just talking in general. So it's a pretty good way to look at it because if we have seen in our daycare dogs get um, dissexed, neutered, spayed, whatever you want to call it, and become back and become different dogs in very good ways. Calm down, no more real aggression, completely really good. And I know of other dogs that get dissex too early and become very fearful because they lack testosterone. So look, there's many arguments for both sides. There's not all one fix for all. It's a matter of sort of working out what works best for you as an owner and your dog and, uh, and judging for yourself. Um, other people all have opinions and it doesn't make their opinion correct. Remember that. One piece of the puzzle. <laughs> what we're gonna quickly do now is we're gonna to convert to, we're gonna do a walk bys with um, a little head harness on instead of slip lead. I like slip lead, I think they're great. But for really strong pulling dogs, if you're not, if they're not well trained, you can still be hard to manage them. Um, I think they're good. It really depends on the level of the dog and the level of the owner and the skill. So I would work between both with this dog. Um, I think a head harness is a really good way to take the power out of a dog, but it doesn't, it doesn't really train them. Like I like a slip lead because it's more of a tool that helps you train the dog. A head harness is a is a tool that restricts their ability to pull. Do you know what I mean? It may sound a bit weird, but I think it makes sense. Um, but this guy is getting trained as well. So they're working between both. They're training him with a slip lead. They might walk with a head harness and go between both and see what works best for them. But I just want to do a quick assessment to see how much easier it is to manage on a uh, head harness um, and I've got a little slip collar connected to it because sometimes these can be, you know, he's a big strong dog. We, if that breaks, we want to back up. So that's a little slip collar attached to the uh, head harness. Okay, we've got Nolly here. Let's go, buddy. Let's go, mate. Little Nolly. Just a little walk by. Just to, really, this is just a really just assess and show, like, strength wise, how much easier I can manage him on this. And I think it shows. I think, I know it does. We'll go back past that. This is not to show not reacting. This is to show that if he does react, then I have a lot more control of him. I'm trying to exaggerate here. Look, I'm using a couple of fingers. Let's come back again. I would have stopped in front. Okay, sit. Good. <coughs> They're not going to meet. Hands relaxed. I wouldn't stand like that, but I'm just trying to show you that with this, it takes so much power away. He's a big, strong Rottweiler. So this here just limits a lot of his power. It's a good little tool. That was much easier. Sorry, buddy, he slipped up a bit high there. Good. Nice. So the main thing we wanted to answer today is this for these owners, and they know he's been around dog before. Is he a dangerous dog? No. Even by the footage you saw before, he's not dangerous. He's a dog that gets triggered and gives off a vibe around certain dogs and there was a few that weren't warming up to him that doesn't mean he can't get better but he's definitely triggered by certain dogs um and other dogs as you can see here he can be best friends with he's been here for 10 minutes playing with this dog and they really really like each other they probably never have a problem so don't always judge it on one dog meeting but understand that being a dog being reactive and aggressive a dog doesn't make them a bad dog doesn't make them aggressive or dangerous it means they don't like certain dogs they can't deal with that and you just as an owner have to be aware of that how to manage your dog around those situations uh, as usual if you like what we do and you got some knowledge off myself or this man over here um, give us subscribe a follow a share a like you're getting free information free learning cost you nothing push the little button thanks